Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me on the runway for episode 2 of what I'm now calling Kerbal Wars. This is a follow-up to my carrier video, and I really want to do stuff with that, because it is just epic fun. But after the uh, events of last time, um, there was, well, uh, issues with the carrier after it was blown up by four missiles. So we need to go and get the crew, because they're pretty wounded, they have no way of getting back. Uh, well, you imagine they're wounded, they might actually be fine, but the ship's in no shape. The, uh, well, they've only got one little fighter up there, which has proved not particularly effective. So, um, we're just going to get them down and then figure something out. I'm thinking the carry is done. It's broken. It has, well, it can, we can fly, but it has hardly any internal stabilizers anymore or SAS modules. Um, so yeah, we're going to, you know, deal with that. But right now, let's just focus on the task at hand, fly to orbit in this plane. And we are just going to cut ahead now because obviously it's just a pretty standard launch. I am actually going to probably do this in a very different style to most of my KSP. It's probably going to be very little um, four times time accelerate because it's not particularly uh, like cinematic and more kind of cutting and edited and it does take a while but I want to put a lot of effort into this. So yeah, it's just getting up to altitude and then going more flat and going very fast. Although my um, my target did fly overhead. Um, but anyway, we've cut ahead again to where we change over to rocket fuel and we just kind of keep burning on the same path. Um, this, you may have noticed, um, it is a dark, I am sorry for that, uh, but it was just happenstance. Um, I will try to do this more in the day. You will have probably noticed, however, that the two back fuel tanks are proper rocket fuel tanks and not plane things. That's because you need fuel density, really. You can't get... Those fuselage bits don't actually carry that much fuel, so it makes them kind of inconvenient. So I've just started using these tanks at the back for these sort of planes, which is actually pretty useful. Um, and yeah, now it's just a matter of getting an insect and getting into orbit. This is called the Mockingbird, and that is kind of because... Well, it's a medical plane, as you may have noticed from, um, well, from the uh, markings on the wings. Those solar panels uh, have marked out uh, crosses for, you know, a uh, medical help plane, and uh, hopefully that will mean that um, enemies can't shoot it down. And that's why it has no missiles and everything. That's why it's called Mockingbird, because you can shoot all the Blue Jays you want, son, but it's a, it's a sin to kill a Mockingbird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, bit of bit of literature in here. But anyway, uh, now it's just a matter of catching up with the carrier, which I cut through because it was very boring. It was just time warping and then a small prograde burn until I got to the Hermes carrier. So yeah, you can see the plane quite well now, and I think it is quite pretty. Um, it does have uh, that big, well, uh, kind of a, one of those new crew cans. Well, not that new anymore. I still call these uh, new plane parts new, but they're not really. They've been around for a while. But um, yeah, it's got one of those crew tanks which... Uh, can, you know, take all the crew home. I think there's three on board the carrier. However, I did forget a docking port, so this is going to have to be a bit of an EVA, so hopefully they're not too wounded and, you know, filled with you know, metal and things. But by the time I get there, it is night, because I was very careful moving in, because I was, yeah, relatively low on fuel, and I want a bit just in case I overshoot. Although I do have a lot of RCS, and I believe I have put RCS engines on the back of this so that it can use them as, like, an OMS pod, which is orbital maneuvering system, for those of you who don't know. Which is the kind of thing they used on the space shuttle, um, which were just like engines that effectively, I think, did use um, the same RCS fuel as their reaction control system. But anyway, let's get the guy out of the fighter first. He's had a rough, uh, rough week. Um, yeah, it has been a pretty rough week. I mean, he was uh, in a, well, he was actually outside the carrier when it got attacked. But yeah, if you can just about see there, there's a giant rend in the back. And if you didn't see the last episode, I do implore that you go and watch it because it was a bit of, uh, well, talking through the carrier and then getting attacked and it um there was it looked that you'll notice the carrier looks kind of fine from the outside it's it's funny the damage doesn't look so bad from out here um but in on the inside it has no crew cans it has like it's lost a bunch of its back wall a bunch of its you know armor it's just not a safe place for crew right now so i'm gonna deal with it but yeah i've got the lights on the kerbal so you can see the plane a little better and you can have some nice cinematic shots at night but i am i, I am aware that um youtube does tend to compress uh footage so i will try to um, try to, you know, keep this uh, mostly in the day, but, uh, well, you know, I'll t maybe I'll brighten it or something, but there's lots of lights on, so you can see what's going on. I mean, I can't imagine it's so compressed you can't see it, although my screens are quite bright. But, yeah, I will, you know, try and keep it as cinematic as possible. But, yeah, we're just going to get a lure crew across. I'm not going to show every EVA, because this is quite a long episode already, because I did put quite a few things into it. But, anyway, it's time to return home. Um, and yeah, we'll just do the same thing, kind of cut through and show some nice shots. But yeah, now we need a new plan, really, don't we? We need a new carrier, because that one's pretty much out of action. I mean, it can fly, but it doesn't have any, you know, crew cans or 
actually any power in the night. It only has those two solar panels, so it's not actually brilliant anymore. And it was never brilliant in the first place, so I'm going to do a few, uh, well, make some changes in my next one. Um, but anyway, I did get this nice shot of just kind of flipping over over the desert. Just uh, I thought that did like, <laughs> look quite nice. Um, I'm too much of a romanticist about space, but whatever. Um, I do realize, actually, that this is called Kerbal Wars, and it's going up during the Star Wars convention. That was actually entirely accidental. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully people will be confused and come here thinking I'm gonna make some TIE Fighters or something. There's probably a, b a bunch of people watching like, this isn't Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Kerbal Wars is in Kerbal. If you don't know, is Kerbal is the star around, well, uh, around which we orbit in the Kerbal system. K it's basically Kerbals on Kerbin orbiting Kerbal. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be appropriate. I couldn't just call it Star Wars. I thought that might have already been taken. Um, but anyway, now it's just a time of uh, matter of re-entering. I did re-enter a little. Uh, well, I, I came in a little. Uh, I overshot basically. I, I'm, I'm pretty far away from the runway, so it's just a matter of you know turning around and uh, trying not to lose too much velocity and uh, then burning back. And annoyingly, I was actually planning to come back just right at you know the kind of uh, morning time, so it would have looked awesome. But I overshot, so once again we have to watch the night. But it is illuminated by fire, so. Yeah, there is, don't worry, there is some of this in the night, and the carriers are all illuminated. But yeah, anyway, after, you know, turning around and things, I'll be heading back. But yeah, as I said, I'm going to put up a new carrier, and it's going to be better, stronger, and it's going to have, you know, a, a, a good number of, you know, a, a fleet to defend it. It's going to be a proper battle carrier, because we need to defend our low, our low Kerbin orbit. We need to defend Kerbin, because it's, you know, being attacked, well... There are dangerous people, and we need to protect space from, you know, bad people, because we want to, you know, open it up to civilians and things. That's our, our goal. Um, but anyway, skipping ahead from that, you know, just flying back. This did have just enough fuel to fly back. If you look at my liquid fuel right there, it's pretty low, and by the time I get to the runway, it's pretty bad. Um, this was pretty nerve-wracking, actually. Usually it's the re-entry and the not flipping out and getting everything right that's pretty nerve-wracking, but this was just, I'm gonna run out of fuel. These guys are gonna die. Um, but yeah, luckily we weren't shot down, um, hopefully they, uh, if they were planning on it, they saw the, uh, medical symbols and decided that, uh, that would be morally wrong, hopefully our enemies have some morals, because if they have morals, we could exploit them. No, because we should both follow the Geneva Convention and then, or, you know, if we just follow it, it means we're right. But no, um... Yeah, so, or they may have just been lurking somewhere else, planning. But I do like the idea of these service vehicles that are, are not too, you know, warry. But anyway, that was a quite a long flight in, um, so I just skip ahead again. And, um, you know, just, well, glide, well, kind of burn right down to the runway, because, well, I want to keep some velocity up, because this actually has a pretty good glide plane. Those delta wings are pretty good. Um, but yeah, this plane is actually reasonably... Well, it's pretty good. I mean, it goes to orbit quite well. It brings crew back. It, I'm thinking of making a cargo variant as well, where I just replace um, the crew can with a cargo with a small cargo bay. That could be good for bringing missiles up and things. Um, I think this might just be my kind of workhorse um, small service vehicle. I might build a bigger plane, um, but the, some of the bigger planes might be like kind of almost carrier size, so it might uh, might dwarf them a bit. But anyway, we'll see. Anyway, it's uh, just a matter of landing on the uh, runway and not crashing now, that would be embarrassing. Um, but yeah, with the nice lights illuminating everything, it does look kind of cinematic. Uh, and yeah, there we are. Touchdown. Everything's good. We are back. But now, it's time to go and defend the the orbit, well, defend the space we almost lost with my new, better, harder, stronger, faster carrier. It's actually not faster because it has way more fuel, and that's why it has such a big launch vehicle. I... This looks like I've brute forced it, which I have. I've brute forced it on fuel and thrust because I just needed a lot of fuel and thrust. But this took just an insane amount of design. The first one, pretty easy to fly, um, pretty easy to get up there. You just kind of make sure the center of lift and stuff is okay. But this is just unstable. It's probably because I've put a cowl on front of um, the hangar bay, as you can see, to defend it from like upward attack. But yeah, and the rocket's not pretty because once I got it working, I didn't want to. I didn't want to touch anything. I just wanted it to work. Because this took me so, <clears throat> so long, and it is unbelievably heavy. It's not actually a massive amount heavier than the last carry, but it has a lot more fuel. Um, it has extra xenon gas so that I can refuel my 
light fighters and things. It's got it's just the, the definitive bit version basically. But anyway, we drop the boosters. That's why I'm just skipping ahead to here so that uh, they slide away. Don't slam into the carrier, and everything is good. Um, you may also notice if you really look that at the back near the engines, there's a large docking port. And behind that docking port is a large amount of metal. That is armoring the internal workings of, well, the service module of the spacecraft, really. It's guarding the fuel and everything. And on the back of that uh, docking port is a large um, probe, well, no, a small probe core that I'm using just to control from there because then it points the right way relative to the spacecraft because controlling from that top bridge is kind of inconvenient. But anyway, yeah, now it's... I, I'm tipping over way late, I do know that, but I had to get rid of those boosters first, really. Um, and it's, it, well, it doesn't really matter. This has so much fuel, it doesn't matter how I launch it. So yeah, skipping ahead until I am in orbit, and I still have a lot of fuel left in these engines, but it doesn't matter, because this is in orbit. And yeah, this is the new carrier. It's the basic, same basic shell, but it has a few nicer things on it. It has more fuel, it has... Um, more, uh, well, it has more RCS, it has uh, just a better guarded kind of engine and fuel block, it has xenon gas and things, it just is the works, it's it's the Mark 2.1, and I'm going to call this carrier Odin, because, well, it's the gigantic carrier and it's better than the other one. I know Hermes was a whole exploring thing, but Odin, this is... Well, Hermes was more of an exploring type spacecraft, but now that we have such a threat, it, well, we have an... A, uh, maybe not such a threat, but we have a threat, which could be a problem. We need something big, something battle-worthy, and that is what Odin is for, um, with its armoured everything, basically. So yeah, but right now it is uh, not a battleship, it is just an empty carrier, and before I can get my um, Scorpion fleet ready to go and fill the carrier, I'm just going to send this little scout um, to defend it. Uh, this is my SSTO I worked on a while ago. I actually built it in a live stream. Um, I, I often do, you know, previews and stuff in live streams if you're ever interested. Um, but yeah, um, so let's just take this off and fly to orbit. It has a couple of sm um, pretty powerful missiles. They use uh, solid rocket boosters for their propulsion and then just kind of structural parts. Um, and they, they, they pack quite a punch. Uh, but there's only two of them. But yeah, this is basically just um, a quick easy thing to get into orbit, to go and defend my carrier whilst, um, well, whilst we're arranging our scorpion fighters. Um, I'm planning on putting three in the carrier, I think that'll be enough to defend it, um, and wreak havoc and let slip the dogs of war onto our enemy. Um, we have, uh, been looking for signals of the uh, enemy fighter, we reckon there's probably more than one, it would be very foolish to start a war by yourself. Um, Although we're not at war yet, we're just uh, under terrorist threat. But uh, anyway, let's just uh, move on and, you know, it, again, this is just a simple method of flying up to altitude and then burning very, you know, laterally to gain some speed to get into orbit. But yeah, um, as I was saying, we are just going to start looking for, um, for, for, for the enemy and just try and uh, take them down before they cause any more trouble. But anyway, we start to spin out, but our fuel, our engines switch over just at the right time. I do advise with these engines having an action group to switch over because they don't actually switch over at perfect times. So to avoid, you know, spinning and flaming out, I would have, um, advise assigning an action group to switching from, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, like air breathing to liquid fuel and oxidizer. But yeah, this uh, is heading for Odin, and this is a very nice little SSTO, although it does actually carry a lot of fuel. It, it kind of, its size belies how much fuel it carries. Although when it's actually on the carry, you will realize that it is actually quite a big spacecraft, because it is, well, it's a whole plane. Um, but anyway, yeah, again, just skipping ahead until we're getting our, um, getting our encounter. And annoyingly, this is, uh, this is at night again. I am sorry, that is, that is my fault. Um, that is uh, just lack of planning. Um, in the future, I will try as much as possible to do things uh, like this in the day. But, you know, it's not too terrible. I, I'll, I'll take a look at the YouTube footage to see if nighttime is... I know it's relatively viewable, because I watch it all the time. So, uh, But I imagine if you have a dark screen. Anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out at some point. But anyway, yeah, it's just a matter of moving into the carrier. Which, you know, takes a little while, so I'll save you the... Uh, well, save you the maneuvering skill. If you want to learn how to maneuver, there's a lot of other, you know, videos and things. And this is more trying to be a little cinematic. Obviously not too much, because if you go overboard, it just gets kind of crazy and impossible to do. As I have discovered in past attempts at this sort of thing. But anyway, yeah, we just back onto it. It's hard, do it's hard parking in reverse in space. 
Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking when I was docking. It's more like parking than anything else. But yeah, you can see it's a relative. It's a pretty big plane. I mean, even compared to the carrier, which we do know is pretty big. If you've ever seen a Scorpion spacecraft inside it, or uh, um, or a little little Kerbal, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but still, anyway, it's just a matter of refueling it now, and we will do that in the day, so you can see all of this and all of its majesty. Um, so I'm not gonna, yeah, the refueling took a while, so this is just taking fuel from the main tanks of the carrier and putting it in the plane just in case it needs it. Um, but anyway, skipping ahead, we have received signals from the moon. More worryingly, the, our, the Hermes carrier has gone missing. We believe that the rebels have taken the carrier uh, out to the moon and you are now using it as a station because it's not so useful as a carrier anymore because it, you need to have pretty central mass for it not just to flip out. So yeah, this is a drone going to research this. We don't know what kind of force they have out there, but if they've taken the carrier, there's a good chance they have, um, well, there's a good chance they have our Scorpion fighter that was in it, and uh, they probably have their rebel fighter that destroyed the last carrier, well, wounded the last carrier, which they did actually use, um, well, are using, we think. So uh, yeah, this drone is going to go and find it. Uh, just launching on a conventional rocket because, well, that's easy. Um, I guess I could have built a nice looking plane and done some cool things, but eh, why, why bother? It's only trying to be... No, but this is just a quick and easy way of going to the moon. And a pretty small upper stage is uh, all that's needed because it's not a particularly heavy drone. But yeah, this uh, all its workings of this drone are inside a little cargo bay, so they're all protected from potential attack. But yeah, you know, skipping ahead, this is just fairly standard, just going to the moon. So um, yeah, I think mainly in this series I'm going to be skipping ahead things that are just pretty standard because, I mean... You probably don't come here to, you know, watch me get an encounter with the moon. I mean, there's plenty of series where I do do that, and you can learn that sort of thing vicariously just by watching it. Um, but uh, vicariously is the wrong word, but still. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just, I, 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 I'm not going to go crazy on, like, this is how I got to the moon. But yeah, you can see it. You just kind of burn when you see the moon rise over Kerbin, and that's just a pretty good reference. So yeah, you can learn to play KSB in this series, but... Uh, it's probably better to watch some other stuff. But anyway, again, skipping ahead to where the carrier is, because it was just a fairly standard encounter and all of that. Um, there is the Hermes carrier, our, uh, well, our, our worries are, our, 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 well, all our worries and things were absolutely right. It has been brought out to the moon, probably being used as a station, as I said, because it's not that much good. And, oh, and we did get some footage of, well, our Scorpion spacecraft leaving the carrier. And on top, there are two large fighters. Like, those are heavy fighters. I think that one behind is the one that just well, attacked this carrier in the first place, and that other one looks menacing with those blade-like wings. But yeah, this is the, um, the uh, fighter that was already in the carrier. And uh, <laughs> smack the solar panel. Good job, pilot. Um, but yeah, it's nose-loading these missiles, because these were some of the original missiles I made that didn't work so well. So, uh... These are best fired from the nose, um, kind of like a, another ion-powered fighter from a battle series. Uh, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> anyway, the first shot is away at our scout drone, which is not good, but it does just skim by. That was lucky. That was uh, from pretty far away, and we know these torpedoes aren't particularly accurate, but it has moved in closer. Firing up again, it takes a shot, and that does look like a pretty hefty explosion, but a really confusing one. Um... It doesn't look too damaged, but it may have destroyed the data cores, so it's time to, once again, you know, dry, just quit our grin and drop our linens and put this uh, fleet of scorpions in orbit. Um, this is uh, three scorpion spacecraft, much like the ones you just saw um, that the rebels have stolen. And on the top there are six additional missiles, so these can be uh, side-loaded twice. Um, and these missiles um, are made so that they can be fired two at a time, so that they don't have to be nose-loaded, so they can deal some serious damage. Although, if you, uh, you can nose-load them, I guess. Um, nose-load them, by the, by the way, means putting them on the nose of the spacecraft, because, well, the ones the Rebels were firing weren't made very well, so um, they have to be decoupled and have their engines fired up at the, before that, so if you put it on the side, it'll just spin out because the engines will be firing. But yeah... Anyway, um, now we're just uh, obviously skipping ahead, as per as per this episode, to the Odin Carrier Mark 2. Point. Oh no, it's just Mark 2. Uh, it's technically Mark 2.1, but um, yeah, basically it's Odin and then Carrier Mark 2. Um, that's how I'm probably going to name most of my spacecraft, is the name of the spacecraft, like Odin or Hermes or, you know, whatever. And then their type of spacecraft, so like Carrier or Frigate or Corvette. I like the idea of Corvettes, like light but, you know, 
well, just like kind of small, heavily armed, um, like gunboats, effectively, uh, like armored, but not like crazily armored, and then just like lots of little missiles, and you know that'll hopefully, uh, well, hopefully it won't come to that. Hopefully we won't have to, you know, raise a giant fleet of frigates to fight off our enemy. Hopefully this carrier, filled with a full complement of scorpions, will uh, will do the job. And these are caught. Well, these scorpions may be small, but we know that the um, it's the small, the smallest, deadliest, the uh, smallest scorpions who are the deadliest. So yeah, these will weave inside and kill everything. Hopefully, um, but anyway, I'm just going to deposit these extra missiles from the spacecraft and uh, just put them on these docking ports. Uh, I need to leave two on the spacecraft because that's how they're supposed to be kind of um, kind of stocked. Uh, well, armed, I guess have one on each side so that they can quickly get into battle, fire off some shots, and then come back and reload. But yeah, that's the first set of missiles on, um, and then it's just a matter of kind of, well, just doing the same thing again with the, well, I brought three extra sets of two, and I'm going to leave them just as sets of two for, for for now, so that I can just, well, if I need to, just grab them by the nose, for well, grab them on the nose of the spacecraft quite quickly, or just, you know, load them one by one onto the kind of side bits, I guess the claws of the scorpion. But anyway, um, let's just uh, move through this kind of laggy orbital maneuver and put the next uh, missiles on. You can see the lag's pretty bad right now. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, considering I've got three scorpions, um, a carrier, and um, and a SSTO on top. I think this is about manageable, um, but I think any more than this would be a little bit crazy. So when... Uh, well, the plan for this is to go back out to, uh, well, go out to the moon and attack the rebels and hopefully thwart them there. But I will be keeping the carrier out of physics range of, well, the enemy carrier. Although I think I'm going to name it, uh, call it an enemy station because it's not really effective as a carrier anymore, as I have mentioned. But anyway, let's put the final missiles down here and then, you know, dock this. And you can see that shroud does look quite cool there. Um, cool if you're in herd like me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, and then we just need to park our uh, park our fighter up top. Um, oh no, on the side actually. They park in the uh, well dock on the um, well the bit to the to the side. The small docking port's just to the side of it because you can see it's much wider down there, so it's much easier to get in and out of a spacecraft if need be. Um, so yeah, just park it here. Um, I like calling it parking because it kind of um, <laughs> it kind of makes it sound uh, less. Less, um, just kind of silly in space, I guess. But I did get this nice shot of drifting towards the carrier. It did look cooler at the time, um, because it was, I don't know, not running better, but still. It, it looked different to me. Anyway, yeah, let's park this one up. It, uh, well, it makes, uh, space travel sound much easier if you say park rather than dock and maneuver. But yeah, uh, this was just, you know, sliding along the side. And this carrier is pretty big. I reckon you could, um, have like uh, these two fighters kind of in the front and then take that uh, fighter at the back round them and come out. I think it's probably big enough for that. I know it definitely is. Yeah, it is a pretty big hangar. Um, and I am very proud of how big the hangar is. It's uh, very useful. But anyway, now we just need to dock this um, final fighter. But yeah, we have reached the end of the episode. We are, you know, ready for the next episode where we will unleash hell upon the rebel scum. Uh, <laughs> Makes me sound kind of like the Empire, doesn't it? But uh, no, we are the good guys. As uh, well, as long as we win, because then we can write history to say that we're the good guys. Um, but anyway, hopefully we will be able to take them out and stop them breaking any ships and anything uh, in the next episode. But until then, uh, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.